Item number SCP-2331 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-2331 is currently being tracked by both Mobile Task Force Kappa Theta Get Lucky and Research Team Theta Theta After Party. When an iteration of SCP-2331-P is confirmed, Mobile Task Force Kappa Theta are to enter SCP-2331-P in an attempt to capture SCP-2331. Research Team Theta Theta is currently working on a way to predict SCP-2331-P iterations. Amnestics are to be distributed to all participants of SCP-2331-P iterations. Description SCP-2331 is a humanoid that appears to be an animate hay-filled mannequin, commonly known as a scarecrow. SCP-2331 can be identified by its carved pumpkin head, which has an internal glow of fluorescent blue in low-light conditions. SCP-2331 is theorized to be capable of triggering SCP-2331-P, and only appears in order to trigger SCP-2331-P. SCP-2331 is most active during the month of October. SCP-2331-P is a phenomenon that occurs in any area in which SCP-2331 appears. SCP-2331-P is the spontaneous organization and generation of equipment typical of a medium-sized festival that involves a light set and electronic music, colloquially known as a rave. SCP-2331 will assume the role of a disc jockey. SCP-2331 is capable of controlling the space contained with SCP-2331-P, often changing the humidity of the air, spontaneously producing non-poisonous colored smoke, and affecting the texture or size of the walls. It will also produce objects such as glow sticks or candy. SCP-2331-P will generally attract humans typically between 18 and 30 years of age, although humans as young as 13 and as old as 73 have been known to attend. Although social media and word of mouth are often cited when attendees are interviewed, the drawing of a large amount of participants will occur even during low amounts of social media coverage. It is theorized that attendance to SCP-2331-P may be under certain mental effects, although the details of potential effects are still undergoing investigation. Each iteration may last from 5 to 24 hours, depending on the size of the rave and any interruptions from either Foundation activity or local law enforcement. Upon the conclusion of SCP-2331-P, SCP-2331 will disappear and trigger a new iteration within 72 hours, usually in the continent of North America. No anomalous activity or behavior is noted of any participant of SCP-2331-P iterations apart from SCP-2331 itself. SCP-2331 may trigger SCP-2331-P in any area with enough space for a rave, but prefers indoor locations. It is more likely to appear in areas with high population densities, especially near or at institutions of higher education, such as trade schools, universities, and colleges. Incident 2331-01 October 19, 2014 Incident Log Note, this is the first contact between MTF Kappa Theta and SCP-2331-P. Involved personnel, Agent Asla, Agent Michalski, and Researcher Vitska. Begin Log 2119, Agent Asla, Agent Michalski, and Researcher Vitska arrived at SCP-2331-P, taking place in the Student Union Building of University. 2120 Researcher Vitska adjusts her gas mask, glow stick necklace, and pink wig. Agents Asla and Michalski, having added glow sticks and fluorescent strips to their weapons, ensure that they are still functional. 2130 After searching for approximately 10 minutes, Agent Michalski points to SCP-2331 on a balcony. Researcher Vitska is seen interviewing an attendee. 
SCP-2331 takes its head off and throws it into the crowd. The head explodes into fluorescent green smoke before it reaches the crowd, although no pumpkin parts can be seen. SCP-2331 then produces a new pumpkin head from its table and puts it on its shoulders. SCP-2331 does not appear to have a head or neck underneath the pumpkin head. 2131 Agent Machalski and Agent Asla attempt to approach SCP-2331. SCP-2331 is seen on a table with sound equipment, adjusting levels of volume. 2132 Agent Machalski is interrupted as two college students pull him away to dance. Agent Asla accidentally pushes another student too hard, causing an argument. SCP-2331 notices the commotion and adjusts its microphone. 2133 Agent Machalski I'm not interested, okay? Agent Machalski attempts to push the civilian away. The civilian says, Shut up and dance, dude. 2134 SCP-2331 turns its head towards the agents. It points and waves as it plays another song. SCP-2331 then waves its left hand over the wall, which appears to stretch diagonally before snapping back into place. 2135 Multiple college students begin shoving the agents out of the area, citing reasons such as being too close to the DJ, threatening the DJ, or being disruptive. Researcher Vitska is not removed. 2140 Researcher Vitska finishes her interview and leaves SCP-2331-P. SCP-2331 can be seen making a downwards motion with both hands as fluorescent leaves appear to be spontaneously produced from the ceiling. These disappear before touching the floor. 2145 MTF Kappa Theta continue to observe SCP-2331-P. SCP-2331-P ends without further complication after 10 hours. End log. Interview 2331-02 Interviewer Researcher Vitska Interviewee A civilian later identified as Susan Keller Begin log. Hello, can I speak with you for a moment? What's your name, er, doll? Just call me Susie. <laughs> sure, I can talk. Can you tell me about the DJ? He's, um… Got a great taste in music, doesn't he? Sure as hell he does. We call him Scrave Crow, cause of that awesome costume he has on. I don't know about him, actually. My girlfriend told me a raid was happening and I couldn't miss it. Costume? Oh my god, you're like super new to this, aren't you? It's a thing some of them do, like Daft Punk and Dead Mouse. I get it. Does he have a, uh, Twitter or a Facebook or anything? I don't know, but it's not a big deal. I'll just, like, Google him late- Oh, that guy over there is looking at us. You want to make out or something to get his attention? No, thank you. Whatever. I'm not drunk enough to kiss you anyways. <laughs> I'm gonna go get some shots. See ya. End log. Incident 2331-04 October 13, 2014 Incident log 1102 Agent Liu, Agent Hansen, and Researcher Vitska enter SCP-2331-P, located in a warehouse at All are dressed appropriately in order to avoid detection. 1104 Researcher Vitska identifies SCP-2331 on the far side of the warehouse. She attempts to maneuver towards SCP-2331. SCP-2331 lurches over its table in a vomiting motion and produces glow sticks from its mouth, which it then dispenses into the crowd. 1110 Agents Lou and Hansen wave their glow sticks in time with a chorus. Researcher Vitska is interrupted by a civilian asking for her number, followed by a different civilian offering to buy her drinks. 1125 Researcher Vitska successfully approaches SCP-2331. Agents Lou and Hansen attempt to also approach SCP-2331, but are interrupted by three civilians requesting a dance. 1130 Researcher Vitska attempts to talk to SCP-2331. SCP-2331 gives her what appears to be a business card and a telephone number, written on it in blue ink, 
but does not otherwise respond to her, and instead continues DJing. 1131 Local law enforcement arrives on the scene. Despite being unable to see police, SCP-2331 appears to look up and towards them. It changes music and presses a microphone to its face. The shadows around SCP-2331 grow in size, and a dense fog fills the room. 1132 A young British male voice is heard from SCP-2331's mouth. SCP-2331 Really? Fucking hell. Basically, boys and girls, it's hard for me to believe this as well. Yes, so don't. Don't boo or anything, or do anything out of order, but basically, the police are shutting the party down. 1133 Local law enforcement officers begin coming out of their cars and approaching SCP-2331-P. Participants of SCP-2331-P stop dancing. SCP-2331 appears to scratch its head. No, I know. It, it sounds weird, but you know what the police are like when they shut something down. If we don't do some things in an orderly and calm fashion, they're gonna pepper spray every motherfucker and get the dogs out and then some people might end up in the cells for a night. 1135 Local law enforcement officers open the entrance to SCP-2331-P and begin to announce that they are shutting the rave down. Agents Lou and Hansen move towards the officers, presumably to prevent them from disrupting SCP-2331-P further. The fog in the room begins to coalesce in mid-air, producing a glowing fluorescent pink arrow pointing to the exit. So ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what you'll have to do, I think people might have to… SCP-2331's voice switches to a mechanical tone. Head to the after party! Note, upon further investigation, all of SCP-2331's dialogue is a voice sample. 1137 SCP-2331 waves its hands in the air to the cheering of the participants of SCP-2331-P. All lighting shuts off as SCP-2331 disappears along with sound equipment, alcohol, drugs, and lighting equipment. Participants leave in an orderly and calm fashion. Researcher Vitska attempts to call the number. 1157 Mobile Task Force Kappa Theta receives reports of another iteration of SCP-2331-P approximately 10 kilometers from its previous iteration. Most of the participants of the previous iteration are reported to be attending the new one. 1202 Agent Liu, Agent Hansen, and Researcher Vitska attempt to enter the new iteration. They are denied entry by several participants near the entrance, stating that it is a private party. This new iteration lasts for approximately 8 hours with no further unusual activity. End log. Interview 2331-04 Interviewer, Researcher Vitska Interviewee, an unidentified civilian. The call is eventually traced to a phone booth. Begin log. Hello? Oh, hi. I was given this number by SC, um, a fellow called, um, Scravecrow? <laughs> yeah, I know the guy. I'm not him, though. Just an old friend. He's a busy guy, so I usually pick up the phone for him. What did you need? Could you tell me more about him? How did you meet him? I'm part of a local newspaper, I'd like to interview him too. Well, I could tell you plenty about him, but you probably won't believe me. He used to be called Jack, you know, of the lantern variety. He used to do a lot of work, changing the color of the leaves and making things foggy on dark nights. He was a bit of a seasonal worker, if you know what I'm saying. So why is he known as Scravecrow these days? Well, times change. Celebrations around this time of year? <sighs> it's hard to watch something you've lived for hollow out to a shell of its former self. Jack got tired. He got sad. He retired and moved on to something that reminded him of how things used to be. I don't… so… What is your relation to him? <laughs> I did something very kind for him once. We've had a kind of friendship ever since. Either way, I'm not buying your story about being a reporter, miss. Oh, did you need a name or something? I can give you the number of my employee. 
I don't really know who you are or anything, but whoever you represent, please let them know that he doesn't want any trouble. He doesn't hurt no one, and his parties never get violent. He's just an old man looking for a feeling that's been lost to time. Hangs up. End log. Thank you.